in that. Um, we are honored this morning to have as our guest Sam McVeigh. Uh, Sam is the leader of the Wichita Prayer Movement, and we have asked if Sam would come and share some of what they uh, have going on and some opportunities that you have to be involved. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, it's good to be with you this morning. Um, I love Westy Free, and um, uh, Pastor Ken's become a good friend of mine, and I love Adam and Greg and the hearts for the Lord, and just so thankful to be here this morning. Uh, yeah, my name is Sam, and I am married by the grace of God to Amy for 33 years. She's on a plane to Louisville to speak at a homeschool conference right now. We have nine kids, 20 grandkids, and are in over our heads. And so um, we lead a ministry called Disciple Nations, and Disciple Nations is locked in on and committed to spreading the supremacy of Christ in all the earth by igniting movements of prayer and disciple-making. And um, I get to work with prayer quite a bit, and because of that, people will say, hey, he's the prayer guy. That's the prayer guy. I'm a prayer guy because I'm a Bible guy. I love my Bible, and my Bible from Genesis to Revelation is full of stories of God talking to God, which are dynamic, the Trinitarian, one God, three persons. It's awesome. And of God talking with man and man talking back and that changing the course of history. Uh, nowhere is that highlighted greater than the Gospels. Where Jesus, as Adam said so well, is often withdrawing to lonely places to pray. He's giving promises about prayer, amazing examples of prayer. And in what is arguably the greatest ministry, it is the greatest ministry that was ever on planet Earth, uh, the disciples ask him to teach them one thing. Would you teach us how to pray in Luke 11? And so they knew that this was the heart of what he did. And he, in his ministry, began it in John 2 by kind of engaging the temple with zeal, remember, and running out compromise. And then Matthew 21 and Mark 11, he does it again. He tears, he's turning over tables, and he's got a whip, and he's running out compromise, and he makes this declaration, declaration, my house shall be a house of prayer. And that house of prayer, I believe, is us. It's not brick and mortar. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's a statement of identity of not only what we do, but who we are. I would actually make the argument that prayer is one of the most human things you do. When you talk to your creator, which is what our salvation bought for us, yes, we get out of a bad place, we go to a good place, but really what it is is we lost God and we get him back through the atonement of Jesus Christ. So we now get to dialogue, and so you may say, I'm not a prayer person. I promise you, you will be. If you are born again, that's where you're headed. He's going, to be, he's going to finish that work that he starts in you and draw your heart to dialogue with him. There is no biblical gift of prayer. It's a general call to all of us. And so that kind of call and that kind of scripture got me on a plane in 2015. I went to South Korea, met in an undisclosed place with some missionaries who were reaching North Korea and China, amazing people that bore scars on their bodies. And we prayed and we talked for a couple of days, snuck into North Korea, prayed a little bit, went into China, met with some underground church leaders. And in China, the Lord laid it on my heart really strong, like a whisper in my heart. There are global consequences for what you do with prayer in Kansas. Got on the plane, got back here, found every pastor I could find that would listen to me. We talked a little bit. And again, with help of people like Pastor Ken, we had a near 30 prayer meetings over the next five years in the city. Thousands came to pray at multiple churches, even at Coke Arena. Well, COVID came, there was a pause, and now we, here we go at phase two. And I have given up congregational pastoring to give myself to this mandate, this scriptural call to the body of Christ, and this fueling of passion for Kansas. I'm living for trying to rally 100,000 intercessors in the state of Kansas that are all praying the same Bible verses the same day. We're looking to draw 10,000 in what we're calling the prayer furnace in Wichita, in just a simple prayer chain where we are asking everyone to pray one hour a week, to pray the scriptures one hour a week in a prayer chain. You go to the website, wichitaprayer.com, wichitaprayer.com. Did I say the website yet? wichitaprayer.com. And so you go there, and then you would see this, and you could hit the button on the prayer furnace. And then it'll take you to a tool we built, which is this. 
And on it, you can sign up. You can hit the hour of the day that you want to pray, and there'll be a counter that will tell you how many people are praying during that hour. At the top will be kind of total hours in Wichita. We hope two hits 10,000 plus soon as we see a roaring prayer furnace. There's, this is an earlier picture. There's people signing up now. We don't have all the hours covered, but we are really looking to see that happen. So you'll know if you're praying with 300 people at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday or three people at 3 a.m. on a Thursday. And so please consider joining with us in this prayer effort. I believe with all my heart that prayer will accomplish great things. Every hu human history has been shifted by prayer. All great revivals have, have turned on the hinge of the people of God praying. We will pray, and everyone will pray when the plane's going down in the crisis hour. But would we pray now at the invitation of him to come into relationship and ask our great God for great things? And so what I want to do right now before I hand the mic back is I want to pray for you. I want to pray. I am extending this invitation to churches all across the city and even in the state. But I know it's the Holy Spirit really that has to touch the human heart to draw us in. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to do the awkward thing of waiting silently. It says be still and know that I'm God. I'm going to add, be still for a moment. Would you ask the Holy Spirit himself, should I be part of this? Are you drawing me to take one hour a week to be part of a great effort where thousands pray together? Let's pray. Our Father.